sign them up for everything. Ah, that's not the operative word. To learn and develop skills and interests. This part. When there is a connection where the child, the youth understands that there's a skill that they're learning, that's when the activity becomes a value. The dancing, the band, the, the clubs, the, the um, youth clubs, the sports. If I'm going to be in dance, and at 17, in grade 11, I'm not dancing anymore because I don't see it as my exit ticket in life, that I'm not going to go off to university or go off to college or become a professional dancer, I better have learned something about being associated with dance. Because if I started when I was three and I'm now 15, 16, that's 13 years. Do it an hour or two hours a week, and if they really got into it as much as five hours a week, think of how much time. Translate that time to your own time. If you spent that amount of time in one thing, where would you expect yourself to be? So we're hoping that those interests that our students and our youth are part of are really developing some sort of skills. You get into the conflict in athletics. So my child plays soccer, my child plays hockey. Hockey's becoming a 12 month of the year activity, but I really want them to be well rounded and do soccer. And now the hockey coach is saying, I'm sorry, this is what our trial is, but we've got soccer games that are championship games. How do I, where do we prioritize? Oh my gosh, there's a skill set. How do you prioritize and how do you stand up for what your beliefs are? That's a skill set that comes up. It's not comfortable but it's definitely a learning piece because we know that as we get on later in life as adults, we do have to make some of those decisions. Sometimes financially, sometimes um, uncomfortably with our children that we do need to make a choice that they may not like, but those are part of the skills of that constructive use of time. Internal assets, they're the ones that impact who we are because of what our environment has created. Who we are as parents, who our um, students, our youth have as friends, what adults impact them, what their values are, what their morals are. Commitment to learning. Oh, you hope they have this. Learning for a lifetime. So today, when you leave me, I'm actually going to give you two websites that you'll be able to go home with, I hope, and actually unpack a little bit. It's your own professional learning. What else can I learn? Oh my gosh, look where this website took me to. What great ideas. Belief in your own ability. How many of our kids don't believe they can? I'm not good at math, Mom. Hey, you weren't good at math. How do you expect me to be good at math? So why am I taking math? Well, it's not about what your belief is. It's about learning how to do it. I didn't know how to put a PowerPoint presentation together in my life. Do you like all my little animations? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had to learn. I had to learn how to do that. Embed things. Positive values. We hope that again, because our students, our children are part of the Holland Catholic Youth, the Holland Catholic District School Board, that these positive values come as well through our faith formation. The guiding principles to healthy choices. That they are a discerning adult. That we, we look to help one another, not because it's the um, thing we can choose or not choose to do, it's because we are morally obligated to that because of our faith. It is our internal compass. It is our internal compass that defines what we should or should not do. Social competencies, here it is. Relationship, problem solving, and coping. Do I have coping strategies? Do I know what I need to do to be able to survive in a situation? What can I do? My daughter came home in grade 11, halfway through March break. Uh, this is my oldest one, I'm sorry. She, she really is well-rounded. I'm very happy for her. She's a smart little girl, but she liked to do the, um, she always had her own idea of things. So she came home, it was the end of March break. They never tell you the beginning of the, the holidays, right? They always tell you in the last bit of it. So it's the, the Sunday night. Mom, I have to tell you something. What? I haven't been going to biology. Okay, I know my colleague, know it all. Okay, why? I don't know, Mom, I just a whole bunch of it. And I went to see the CYC, and I was told that I'm clinically depressed. <laughs> no, honey, you're not clinically depressed. Now, I can say that, and I can make a little bit light of it, because I know my daughter, I know her lifestyle. I said, honey, what you are experiencing is avoidance. 
you are experiencing avoidance because you don't like that. And because you don't like that, you've withdrawn, you've not told me. And now you've figured that if you tell me something that's a label, I'm going to be able to say, oh my gosh, yes, let's go get help. I said, honey, it's the subject, it's the temporary situation, it's, the, it's that piece in time that's impacting you. It's not about being clinically depressed, it is about being avoidance with the subject. Now that you know that we love you, now that you know we're together to help you out with it, let's figure out how to cope with that. Oh, okay. And on life went. Go ahead, ladies. Hi, sorry to interrupt everybody, but we just come to pick up your last tickets. And if anybody has any outstanding passports, so this way when you have uh, finished your session, you can see at the front door whoever has one. Thank you. I'm just going to continue on. Then. Yes, <laughs> sorry. Mark. So our next one is positive identity, a sense of uh, purpose, power, and promise for the future. Believe it or not, and, I, and again, it's not about a believe it or not. It is about evidence. Evidence says that our youth of today have a positive view of tomorrow. They do believe in tomorrow. They do believe in a good life. They do believe in a good world. That's great. So now that you know that. You can go home and work with your children and understand that they do believe in tomorrow. Let's figure out how to help them along the journey to that tomorrow. So positive mental health is where we get to next because again, building assets has a real impact on that positive mentalness, that positive mental support. How I feel, how I see, how I do. There are going to be obstacles and glitches, but in the end, it is about that positiveness. Well, current research, literature research, has shown a shift in thinking. And the thinking is, if it's about psychological well-being, we know that the absence of problems and risks or needs, concerns, do support positive well-being. But the corollary, the opposite, is equally important. And that is the existence of positive factors. Well, if there are positive factors that influence as much as the problems or the absence of those problems because we can't keep our child's bubble perfect. We were all worried about this whole bullying thing. And when my child goes to school every day, are they a victim or are they okay? When they come home smiling, we're ecstatic. Whew. That's one day done. They come home not smiling, it's time for us to have that conversation to act. So we know we can't often deal with the absence of but we can definitely look at the existence of the positive influences. And that comes back to this concept of asset building. So asset building is about a paradigm shift. And a paradigm shift is a holistic thinking of moving from one type of thought to the next. There is a whole system of what happens in a paradigm shift. First of all, there's pushback. No, 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 no. That's wrong. We're not doing that. Then there's like, oh my gosh, I've got so much to do. I don't know how to do that to then saying, oh, that was really easy, I get it now. I can work with it. Well, we're in that paradigm shift to see the following. There we go. We used to think that we had to fix the young person's problem. Got a problem, give them a program. Oops, that it was always about programs. Put a program in place. Give them this program, send them to a school, send them to an after school club. Make them do it. Bless you, I'm telling the truth. Give them a program that it was the um, social workers, it was the youth workers, it was the nurses, it was the teachers, it was the principal's problem to fix it. Some professionals got to fix it. The shift is looking at our youth in terms of their strengths. Remember that child, those two children I asked you to think about? You wrote them down? I start thinking about at least one or two strengths they do have. And sometimes the strength might be something that you really don't like. They actually stand up to you. That, that's, a, that's a lot of guts for a kid to be able to stand up to an adult. So how do I make that a strength for them? It's about the relationship. Keep coming out back with that word. What's my relationship like? If I had to grade my relationship, what would it be like with my um, children? And finally, that it is everyone's work, which is why we're here today. This message, this conversation, this presentation we did with every single one of our staff members on the very first PD Day, September 4th. So teachers, youth workers, social workers, um, EAs, ECEs, uh, 
principals, administrators, the Education Resource Center, everyone has heard this concept of let's look at the strength of our kids and how do we do it together. And now we get a chance to continue this journey with our parents. We know that learning declines with students when they experience fear of family problems. We know that. That's what we're dealing with often as the clinical pieces at school. We know that the need to feel um, a sense of self-worth. We know that if they have high anxiety levels, and we're seeing that a little bit more and more at the younger ages. <gasps> I have a test and I don't know if I'm going to pass. And we're all sitting going, and if you don't pass this test, is tomorrow going to not come? That doesn't always help the child, because to them it is a big thing. So where are they getting that messaging? Where are they getting that perspective that it is that and creating the anxiety? This one's the big one. Believe that success is attributable to ability, that ability is fixed, and therefore effort is futile. The math one. I can't do math, why do I bother trying? I don't like biology, why am I going? Well, it's not about that. It's about looking at how do I survive and how do I learn and how do I cope with that. There are lots of things in my job I'm not good at. I don't get a chance to go to my superintendent and say, sorry, don't know how to do that, can't do that. Do you do that? Sorry, boss, can't do that, not going to do it today, get someone else. Uh-oh, there goes my job. But I learn how to cope, I learn how to survive with it. And sometimes we think our children's lives are so simple that it's easy. All you do is sit down and learn. Just sit down and read the book. You sit down and read the book, it's going to come to you. It may not. And we know that learning and cognitive learning has a lot of different um, supports necessary. Asset building is about positive mental health. We know that these characteristics bring us to positive mental health that can be built. So let's look at some of the data. Okay, I have fun with this. This column, this axis, sorry, is about the number of assets. Sorry, the number of issues. So in this particular graph, it's identifying the risk factors. Cigarette smoking, smokeless tobacco, drugs, fringe drinking. This is Halton data. This is your kids, grade seven and grade 10 kids from three years ago. So these guys here are actually this year's grade 10s. So it's gonna be really interesting to see what happens in October, November's um, survey, what they say, and whether this stays the same, because we know what they thought when they were in grade seven. I'm dying to know what they think when they're in grade 10. Well, let's look at this one. The 20 are the assets that are shaded. Those are the assets that we measured in the Halt News survey. What do we see on this graph? Graphs either rise to the right, or graphs rise, otherwise fall to the right. What do we see here? General shape of the graph. Or vice versa, as I get more assets, what happens to my risk-taking behavior? Oh, yeah. So, one asset, and what happened to the child in, to the, the um, information in grade seven? They went from potentially choosing to do four things to doing less than one. Grade 10, we're looking at about three. So if there were three assets, and we don't identify which three assets. So you have 20 on that list, you actually have 40. We put three of them in that child's life. Guess what their choice of risk-taking behavior happens? Okay, this one. Not as pronounced in the curve, but still important. This is about risk for depression. Again, we see that the more assets the child has in their life, again, what is the slight curve? It goes down. So again, when it's fewer than three or four, the likelihood increases. That child's on their own. That child has all those things, those, those evidence of impacting learning happening to them. This one's about skipping school. What happens if the child has two to four assets in their backpack? They go to school. They don't, the likelihood of choosing to do that is huge. 
okay, Bart, give us those assets because if this is the answer, why are we wasting time on other things? Let's just put those assets in that kid's life. Wait till you see the next one. This is about physical activity. Again, the more assets in a child's life, the more appreciation for understanding why being healthy and physically active is important to them. I don't have to sell it. Now, here's the kicker. This is why we're all here today, right? Have our children succeed in school. This is provincial standard score. So provincial standard is 70%, right? Out there, level three. Three assets in their life, and what happens to their, don't know why they did in grade seven. What happens to their achievement of provincial standard? Let's go four assets. Four assets that that child articulates in their life and the likelihood is in Halton that that child is going to be reaching provincial standard. Is that not our goal? Our goal is to support our children to be successful. Then if I nurture these assets, then I will be indirectly and directly impacting their academic performance. What do I need to do as a parent? I'm a good parent. That's what I said, your power is that you're here today. You've just heard the proof of today becomes that validation for you that what you're doing is important and it does impact your children. Okay, let's take the next step. Perception versus practice. I like this slide. I put it together. How many um, legs on the elephant? The old lady, young girl, a boss or two faces. You know, perception. Tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Which way do we look at it? Well, we know that the more positive experiences the student has, the youth has, the greater the likelihood of not engaging in risk-taking behavior and succeeding academically in school. So if more is better, and we agree with that, here's what the data is showing us. First column says we believe it's important. This is a parent response. Second column says, and I do it. Third column is the difference, it's the, separate, it's the um, taking away. 84% of us feel that boundaries are important. 42% of us actually do it. Think, do. Okay, but then you don't understand, Barb. Mommy, can I, 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 yes, you can, here, bang, and off we go. I did the same thing this morning. Went to see jo Joseph in his amazing color um, coat at the Hummingbird Center. Great, wonderful, fantastic. And then I want to take the kids. They put out some, no. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to say it's the end of session three. Thank you for everyone who helped and who attended our sessions today. Uh, just like to announce at this time our Indigo Kobo donation winner, and that's Alvaro Aguado. So, congratulations to you. And as well, please, if you want to see if you're a winner of one of the many other donations from our sponsors, come to the registration area and we will have those names posted. Thank you and have a great day. Uh, my apologies again. The session got cut short. We didn't start till um, 1.15. It is like only 55 minutes and we really took a little bit of time. Um, I'm going to bring you to uh, a slide forward if you don't mind. I want to bring our Catholicity in here, but the Our Kids Network, this website, is a great website in that it supports you with your teaching. And one of the parts that's really good is the Parenting Teens videos. Do you, have you heard of Dr. Jean Clinton? Dr. Jean Clinton has done an awful lot of work with teen brains and brain science and has identified that again, how the kids think are really about the development of that brain. Well, on the site, these videos are actually supportive parenting videos for you. They give you ideas, they give you support along with the work that I've shared with you today in the handouts. Please go to that website. The website is www.ourkidsnetwork.ca, I believe. Let me just double check. Sorry, .ca, yes. So on the Our Kids Network website, you will find that. The second website is actually on this particular handout that I gave you. The Parent Further. And you'll see it up top here. The 
Parent Further website is from the Search Institute. So the two that I referenced here, one that's close to home as the Our Kids Network, but this one as the support from the Search Institute, the evidence-based pieces. If you do nothing else but, but enjoy reading this particular section, it will give you some of those concrete pieces. My role today was to really show you where the evidence was. That all those things that we talk about that are important to kids really are. That the kids do want boundaries. That the kids do want to know significant adults. That our role is to continue to be supportive of that. And what are those activities on how to do it? Often and primarily it is with the socialization pieces, the relationship pieces, and the conversation. Letting them be part of it. The nine parenting strategies are listed. Um, this is what the kids are telling us. Never give up on me, try to understand me. Tell me what's good about me, help me hope and dream, and celebrate my uniqueness. Be open to the possibilities of all people. When I bring that guy or that girl home that you probably don't like, can you just open your mind a little bit and let's find the good in them? Teach acceptance and respect and we won't have to learn tolerance. Feed my interests. Make school more like a community for me, which means please be part of it as well. Even though when I may say I don't want you to be there, talk with them, find out how you could be there with them. Be excited about your subject. Be excited about being the parent with them. Give them a voice. Take them seriously. Even when my daughter said, Mom, I'm clinically depressed, I didn't roll on the floor saying, honey, you know, you got to be kidding me. We really have the conversation of what that means. Help me change things for the better. Believe it or not, they want to be an influence in the world. They have a global life now. They are not just halting. They are the world. Help me act for my ideals. Listen when I talk about the things that mean something to me. And sometimes that means you've got to stop doing what you're doing to really hear what they're saying. Set fair boundaries. Be my role model. Yeah, I didn't act well at that party last night, sweetie, but thank goodness I got you on uh, designated driver call. Was I good? No, but thanks for picking me up. So that in the same respect, when they go, they know that there's no retribution when you pick them up. Challenge me to succeed, but please comfort me when I fail. Assets are for all. They're very simple. The last thing, you have a buff colored sheet that says what is an asset builder. On the back of it is a commitment. I asked you to, it's a, kind of a light, the beige yellow. On the back of it is a commitment that I'd like you to do. What asset will you buy Wednesday? This week Wednesday, will you try to build and put in a youth's backpack? So I give you till Wednesday. Write it down as you go to your next session. Sign that. And by Wednesday, try to build it with one of those youth that you've talked about. Again, my apologies. Thank you for staying the extra few minutes before you moved on. I truly appreciate it. I will stay. So if you have any questions you want to ask me, or if you'd like any more information, I'm happy to entertain you. Please enjoy the rest of your afternoon. And congratulations. Uh -huh. Hi. I'd just like to ask if Alvaro Aguado is still in the building, please come down to the registration area to pick up your Kobo.